everybody, if you could, if you're in your fucking, you know what I'm saying, room right now, huddled up under a blanket or with your homies right now, put your hands together for the homie, the legend, Marcus Anthony Neely. Yeah, how are you doing? You know, I'm, I'm doing. Yeah? I'm out here. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I wake up every day. And I'm currently getting to do what I love, which is uh, be surrounded by artists um, and uh, get paid to make art, you know, do theater. Um, we're working at, uh, Tyron and I are working at the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company, in the Tor Torco. Um, yeah, we just, we just did our first, uh, Show, yeah, for an show. Kinda Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, Midsummer Night's Dream. Midsummer Night Dream, man. What yeah. an amazing show. More like Midsummer Night's like fever dream. Hey, <laughs> Midsummer <laughs> Nightmare. You know what I mean? Uh, Where are you from? I'm from. <laughs> hey, you say what you chest. Say what you chest. Say what you chest. If you want to, whatever's the uh, most comfortable for you. G. Hey, if you don't want to rap for, you can rap for a different city. Hey, I'll ever seen Get Out. Dun dun dun. So, check it. If, if you've ever seen Get Out, right, by Jordan Pill, there's this little town where that doctor family lives, and it's like in this nice neighborhood. Anyways, that's all. That's College Station, Texas. That's <laughs> where it is. Um, a you? lot of rich, elite, racist white people. Oh. What kind of hole do you think that you fill in this artistic world? Aside from acting, like, what do you bring to the table? Like, what, what would you say? And no pressure on that answer. You can yeah, like all good. That. Um, so my end goal is to be my own, uh, producer, and director, and casting director, and uh, artistic direct, like everything. Like I, I want to be like not not the boss, but like I, I want to be the the glue that puts puts things together. So we say like plays are written at the most important parts of that those that character's lives. That's that's the whole point of a play. Like that's that's what makes it interesting. I by no means think I'm interesting as a person. <laughs> no, I'm just like wow. I mean I, I feel I think I'm pretty cool. I'm yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> but I'm not like you can't just be putting my life on a screen yet or anything like that. Um oh, excuse me. But I feel like the just the experiences I've had and the things I feel like you know I've seen that I'm like damn that's that's some shit and I'm only 23 now um, and like my ethnicities and like my family just everything that culminates who I am as a person um, I would like to just you know share that with everybody and just like collaborate together like mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a host like I, I like I like to do the hospitality thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to pour that into my, my art, too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I want to collaborate. I want to hear other people's ideas. I want to mesh them with the stuff I did and put that out to the world because we are the ones that are out there living and doing these things. And I feel like, I don't know, people, it's entertaining. People would like to see that. I feel like there's someone out there they can relate to. Do you have, like, a specific thing that you want to see that you don't, that you don't see already? Um, enough black people in, in science fiction stuff. Mm. Mm. Like, I know, you know, we got Morpheus. <laughs> Morpheus? Morpheus, Glorpheus oh, coming out of the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, facts. We, yeah, we got John Boyega, but he's, he's English. So more sci fi John. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, more. more he's science. a part of the community as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like yeah, a fine yeah. line with, like, yeah, British right. actors, American actors. It's just, yeah. like, it's so hard to like, I don't know, just to pinpoint like who is the traditional black actor because we are all so multifaceted. We come from all these different places. And it's just like, I don't ever want to like feel like jaded about any British man coming into like America and like taking a role from American because it's like, I don't think that's a helpful mindset for us to go forward because. The motherfuckers should be coming over here, respecting what we have, and wanting to include themselves into what we have. And also, hopefully, whatever is happening overseas, they capitalize on what's happening over there. They build a conglomerate. Conglomerate. <laughs> a group of people. Conglomerate. A group of people just to, to uh, you know, what I'm saying to 
see out a specific goal over there overseas in Britain uh, and me hop over there and, like, see what that's about. Because there's a lot of untapped theater in, like, London and Britain and, like, um, what's that one place that everybody's doing Shakespeare at? Um, oh, wow. Prague. Prague, wow. Shakespeare. Prague, Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, like, that's just like, that's awesome. like capitalizing on that and be like, hey, like, I'm that's Marcus good. Anthony Lee. I'm fucking Muhammad. I'm tiring. Like, let's hop over here and see I'm tiring. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, and see what's popping. But yeah. genuinely, like, I, I invite it because it, it brings a new facet of, like, how African-American men, African-American women, and just people of color in general. I don't want to just, like, say African-American people, just black people, but, like, everybody to just see a different light from different places all around the world. I'll be real, yo. Like, yo. If, if, y'all, if y'all know me and Tyron, like, yeah. In the Heights is pivotal in our lives, traumatic yeah. in our lives. Oh, uh, uh, it's both. It's, it's both. both. It's Literally, both pivotal and traumatic. As soon as I hear In the Heights, I'm in the back of my mind, like, to hey, watch it tonight. The 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 <laughs> it's like, it's like all of the problems that were presented to me about In the Heights back in high school to seeing it now at, in a movie. This fully funded, like, Hollywood blockbuster, John. Um, the thing that keeps coming to my head is that, like, like where are all the darker, melanated people? Like, like if it's stories... Don't say about, that. Like, like the, you, you know what I mean? But it's like, this video but it's is like, going to get taken it's down. Like, it's canceled. Like, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a story about uh, the Dominican people, but there's no, there's no conversation on Afro-Dominicans, which is, like, a large majority of this whole culture of Dominicans. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally, yeah. I was first introduced to, like, Afro-Dominicans and people from... And afro Latin yeah, And baseball. Like, yeah. Like, and I was like... Yeah. That's a black man. And he got a, like, Hispanic last name. I'm like, whoa, whoa. how does this work? <laughs> and so it's that And then you, like, it. find out more, and it's, like, a large part of this community. No, I if mean... If I'm being honest, like, it's because, like, the, the Latin, the, the predominantly the Latino community is low, and Spanish and Mexican, there are a lot of prejudices there against mm-hmm. black people. And that, hey. I'm speaking, that's just for me. Hey, that's the same in Indonesia, bro. Like, I darker, mean, yeah, darker yeah. skin toned yeah, Indonesians are... Mm-hmm. Same, same, same too. Yeah. But just like as you mentioned that, Colorism, though, like my whole are, family I grew up with, yeah, they're so all Mexican. Hispanic, yeah. yeah. So how has that been for you being like black and Hispanic? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, for uh, real, boy. I'm an actor. I can be. Yeah. Um, oof. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's part of the reason why I'm doing acting now mm. and why I got into it is because I could, I could be, uh, it didn't matter who, what, what color I was. I mean, it does matter, but to me, it finally did it. I could ignore it. I know other people can't, but for me, I'm like, I'm playing this character is what I'm doing, mm. and like, yes, like, and, and people like it, but like, growing up with my family, I just wasn't sure, like, I knew I was black, and when I'm at school, or doing things solo, I'm seen as a black man, but like, when I'm with my, you know, family that I grew up with, most of the time, my mother, like, she's, she's Mexican, like, but she's very white passing. Mm-hmm. So is my grandfather and my grand grandma. Like, literally, all my brothers and sisters, like all white passing, but they're Mexican. Um, but you know, we just have conversations, and they still kind of don't understand the Black Lives Matter thing. And then it gets boiled down to, well, you're our flesh and blood, and we love you, so it doesn't matter, you know, that you're black. Well, <laughs> what is it that was? I remember one of our fir- earliest conversations of like why you began in acting and you just said it earlier mm-hmm. was because it allowed uh, you to be in a space where you knew who you were. You knew who this character were. Like mm-hmm. coming from a place of uh, having a multicultural background and having a multicultural identity, multi-ethnic identity, um, there was a lot of confusion for you growing up. And so acting was a space of solace because you can do the homework. You, you know, you know what I mean? like they, and exactly. you get to choose, yeah. you get to exactly. choose. And so as a, as you navigate through your life as a human being and as an artist, like what, 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 what are the um, pieces of art that like influenced you, influenced you and your perspective on like shit should be like this. Like things should look like that. Yeah. Things, sh- people should be dressed like this. Like, we should drape people up like that. Like, we should have more of these. Like, what were, yeah. what, it could be movies. It mm-hmm. could be music. Sure. But um, what were these prominent pieces of art that influenced you in your own perspective? Um, to, pre- to, to preface that question, I know from an early age, my mom has always had sneaking suspicions that I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, same um, theme, bro. <laughs> but, like, I've always, because she would always drag me along to go shopping. And I never wanted to. 
Because I never got to get any of it. It was just her <laughs> <and my> clothes. <laughs> Bruh. I love my mom. Shout out. But I remember, <laughs> you know, I'll go wander off, and I'm like, why do the women have the biggest and best clothing selection that, like, at almost every store? Facts. I'm like, I would wear this. This is some gas. Like, as a kid, but I'm like, nah, I can't. You know, I'm not, probably not allowed. That's weird. But, like, oh, I've always noticed, like, yeah, like, there's just... And, of course, once I got older and learned, you know, more uh, vocabulary and political correctness, like, yeah, there should be, like... Gender is a construct, and people should be able to... Everything should be unisex. Like, I hate this, like, no. Like, women specifically have to wear this, and men specifically have to wear that. Like, I don't like that. I just think, if you look good in something, wear it. She, period. Um, so that's where I stood on that. So, you know, just seeing futuristic stuff. But specifically, like, Tyler, the creator, is the first artist that, like, changed me forever. Still influences me to this very day. What did you discover um, seventh grade. He's like one of my favorite artists of all time, and I say that in the sense he's the type of artist I would like to be. I would like, I mean, I don't want to be him, but just like from the fashion to directing his own music videos to writing his own music, learning how to play instruments, um, making commercials, uh, what's up, fashion shows, um, like does all sorts of things um and like i guess kanye west was like the first like black man to really do all of that like in a large sense mm -hmm. i guess in the where the media saw it like it just inspired a bunch of people but i discovered tyler in seventh grade and i lived out oklahoma at this point and i'm riding on the bus to school um it's like in the morning and there's there's a homie of mine uh, who lived in the same neighborhood, his name was Bo Overman. And he was like, yo, man, have you ever seen, have you seen this video of Tyler, the creator? It's called Yonkers. I'm like, no, I'm right. that shit in my life. <laughs> what is it? Because you know I like weird. I was that weird white black kid. <laughs> yeah. so, of course he knew I would like it, and he was right. <laughs> so I saw Yonkers at like 7.30 in the morning Yeah, when I was in seventh grade. And I watched it on my iPod Touch probably like 30 times the same day and just like dove in like went into a, a rabbit hole of Tyler the Creator um, and at that point there was like a day in Ladera he had like uh, two mixtapes out already um, and then Hot Future had a tape out listen to all of that at once um, like I was just I knew everything like I, I was obsessed with that whole group Tyler everything um, and ever since yeah just, just followed him listen to all his music everything he does like uh yeah it was just very because he was that weird it was weird at the time um but like people really like liked it and now i was no longer this like weird black kid i was like that black kid that like listened to tyler the creator yeah. like it was very obvious yeah but that was like in you know and for the first time it was like okay I'm, like in like I, like I, I was already wearing skater clothes, um, you know, tube socks and short shorts and like kitten kitty cat tees and I was like, here's this rapper out here who's dressing the same, like kind of like that's crazy, you know. It made weird oh it, it was okay to be weird. Yeah. Like, it was future, okay to be okay to not be like It was okay to be yourself. Yeah. That finally. Part. Yeah. And there was people that like accepted me and like like that. Um, so fast forward, you know, I moved to Texas and I, and like uh, I found this group who um, you know, we're into our future and Tyler too, hung out with them, you know, started smoking weed, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, Type so yeah, very pivotal, um, and big influence in my life, I would say, um, even to this day. Like, I don't have many role models of people that inspire me, but Tyler, the creator, is for sure. Like, Always the big like, one. Like, his vision That's about so. where he projects his art to go is just... One of a kind. One of a kind. And he just expounds on the ideas that he had at a young age, and it just keeps on keep on going forward to where he's been able to attack a whole different demographic of young motherfuckers still. Like now. Like, yes. like the young dudes now. Yes. Are fucking with Tyler. And I don't even understand the young dudes anymore. Right? No. I'm like, what are they? Exactly, but it's it's became the ruler. 
<laughs> That's what they are. BK the ruler. Tizo <laughs> touchdown. Yo, <laughs> y'all know no, BK the ruler. BK the ruler. If you watching this, we bro. love you so much. Tizo touchdown. If you watching this, we love you so much. Baby, keep watching this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, call my phone back. Oh, it's real. That is Watch where the tides are are, are 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 turning nowadays. And for Tyler to be able to. Uh, be so fluid in the way of his sexuality and also the ways that he's been able to touch the younger generation has been something that is truly exceptional. Especially when we just, like, as we grow older, we're like, ah, whatever they're doing is, like, some stupid stuff. But then again, people thought the same thing about Tyler. People thought the same thing about Kanye West and Kid Cudi's new album, Kids See Ghost. People thought the same thing about ASAP Rocky when mm-hmm. he decided to go a little bit more softer and create these melodic tones and his music and stuff like that. But it's like, Hold space for younger people, younger artists, because that that is invaluable. Shit, John John Michelle Basquiat too. Like, yeah, talk learned, to me about Basquiat. Yeah, that that's what really got me into actually doing uh, like uh, multimedia art. Um, like I make a lot of collages. I uh, paint now, mm-hmm. um, even Photoshop. Like, and honestly, he was the OG of being a Renaissance artist. Like, if you ever get to watch this documentary on YouTube, it's called. The Radiant Child, mm. a Jean-Michel Basquiat documentary. Yep. Um, this man was like, and this is in the 80s in New York City. He was in a band. He was doing graffiti art. He was painting on like just doors and windows. Um, and he, he lived homeless for a long time. It was like panhandling. But like made, like he made little like postcards and he was selling them for like nickels and dimes. And just Andy Warhol was drinking coffee one day, like yep. in a nice little coffee shop. And this broke ass nigga walk into the store with his postcards. He's like, Did you like that? I love those cards. <laughs> and Andy Warhol was like, Here's my wing, kid under it. Like, literally. <laughs> and like, I don't know. Like, and he was, yeah, he was an artist too who, you know, just did everything and mm. like always was creating constantly. Always. Like, he would even leave all his paintings and shit all over the floor and like step on it like but because he'd be working on something else like truly truly like a brilliant mind like r.i.p like died way too young you know but that's another artist that really uh inspires me too and like just how i live my life and do things like uh, he never worked a regular job like had one regular job and he's like no they treat me like a slave it's not what i want to do what I want to do is make art. Either I make money or I don't, I'm still going to make art, you know? Mm. And that's just, that's the, I like that mindset. Yeah. Do you feel like being an actor makes you a better person? Like, I, you specifically, but anybody out there. Yeah, I think it can because, you know, as cliche as it is, you, you literally are walking in somebody else's shoes. And, there, there might be times when you got a scene where you've never gone through what that character's gone through, but you can, you're trying your hardest to relate to it and make it real. Um, and the storylines and plots, like it really is a lot of ethics mm. to like, and that and working as an ensemble, like you're never, I mean, you might have a one man show, but you still got a director, you still got people on set, you still got you know, technicians, um, and they're all there for you. And then if you're in an ensemble, you're all there working for each other. Um, yes, so I, I do believe, yeah, I mean, being an actor really does influence, and artists in general too. I think collaboration is very important. Definitely. And yeah, it helps you hear other people out and work with other people and just be more patient. Believing in yourself. Believing in the things that you have vested inside of you to be storytellers, period. Mm-hmm. And that's all you need. And the wherewithal to just go out and ask people, like, hey, like, I, I just I really want to tell this story. And if you could just, like, work with me, I'm flexible. I'll, I'll, I'll adapt. But I, I just really want to, like, have my name, like, on it. And I want to be able to write it. I want to be able to film it. Whatever you do. And just, like see it all the way through because that is a really beautiful transformative experience for you as an artist to be a part of just to put your work out there and that that keep the ball rolling as you gain gain more notoriety as you gain more money to like get the equipment that you need
It's a beautiful thing. Right? Also, if anyone ever needs any of our equipment, bro, like if you ever see faces anywhere, bro, like just walk in, man. Oh, you need to record something, we got you. Yeah, you freaking, man. you need to freaking edit some jobs, like we got you. Like that's like truly, that's the that's that's what that's faces the is. Like that's the foundation of like the world that we want to live in in the mm -hmm. future, because there wasn't enough of that when I was younger. There wasn't enough of that uh, where we came from, wow, and yeah. that's why like. People move in different places because they want collaboration. They want to work with people who have the same visions as they do, aside from just like punching out with homies and just looking cool, which is like, you always look stunning. You know what I'm saying? Everybody out there is beautiful, but it's like, why did you make the choice of like doing this? Like, why did you make the choice of making a tree video? Why did you make the choice of having a, you know, queen of the damn photo shoot? Like, why? Like, what, what message are you trying to portray? I don't know. How do y'all feel about that? How do y'all feel about like the messages that are put out there with photo shoots that you see, with videos that are put out there? Do you feel like everything needs to be a bit deeper or is it just like just keep it face value? Everything just can look pretty, huh? I'm on and off, yo. I'm on and off. I'm on and off. Like I understand like the importance of purpose and like intention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think something shit doesn't need a while. Like something sometimes, yeah. yeah. Shit shit can look dope, but also it's like sometimes I don't even know why we're doing this. But something is calling me to make this mm -hmm. or tell this story, and then the why comes out from how it affects people. Yeah, and and that that's the and that's the it's tough because it's like I want to come in with more intentionality. I want to create work that isn't just a throwaway. Mm -hmm. It's not just like ah oh, we're recording this just so we have a fucking verse. No, it's like why'd you make this song? Like mm -hmm. who is this song for? Like I, like those are important. But also sometimes it's like getting hung up on the why, getting hung up on your why, like limits you limits you as well because you're not doing the thing. You're talking about doing the thing. When you can just hit record. You got any closing remarks, Marcus? <laughs> um, my closing remarks is I love both of y'all and I'm glad that y'all are out here in Cincinnati. Um, and I hope that the rest of y'all's time here will be good and fruitful and will make some dope shit. Yeah. Um, and to all you people watching, thank you for coming and listening, if you're still listening to this point. So I know y'all got short attention spans. <laughs> but yeah, man. And to all the people that follow us on Patreon, we just want to say like a tremendous thank you. Uh, Y'all have no idea, like, <laughs> those Patreon subscriptions literally be making all of this possible. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to support us in a more tangible way, subscribe to our Patreon. You'll get exclusive access. You'll get be able to connect with me, Tyron, and the rest of the Faces Network more directly. Um, and also, like, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Like, fuck with us. Spotify, like, YouTube, Instagram, underscore XX Faces, XX underscore on everything, TikTok. And if you can think it and dream it and believe it, it's possible. Your words are power. Don't ever forget that. Period. I crashed it. I crashed it. I passed it on the side of the brakes. I passed it and I hit all my brakes. Damn.